You know, folks, from Taxi Driver and Goodfellas to Cape Fear, our next guest, without doubt, is one of America's finest directors. He is also the executive producer of the current release, Search and Destroy. Do me a favor, please welcome Martin Scorsese. You know, when I see you, when I have you here for all too brief a time, I have many, many, many questions because you've led that kind of a life. You've had a fascinating and a wonderful, wonderfully successful career. So I'm going to start with something that happened on our show a couple of weeks ago. Don Rickles was here. Oh, you know, yes. you know yes, Don. Don yes. And Don was shooting his mouth off about working in a movie with you and Robert De Niro in Las Vegas yes. called Casino. Is that the name well, of the film? Casino, yes. To tell us a little bit about that experience. It seems like a great idea for a movie for you guys. Well, with Don, Don was with us for, um, I think, oh, about five months. Pain in the ass, Don. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, Don, Don was, was amazing. Uh, we were, for the first six weeks of shooting, we were shooting at night at the Riviera Hotel. Um, from about 10 o'clock at night to 10, 10, 9 or 10 in the morning. That's Las Vegas. Yes, yes. Yep. And uh, it was a live casino, too. And what they did outside was they said, come and watch the film starring Robert De Niro and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, Joe Pesci and Sharon Stone. And oh, this is coming a in. great it was, cast. It was just, you know, it was a wild cast. But Don, uh, I needed Don. He was playing the casino manager. I needed him every shot if I could with De Niro because he always had to follow De Niro around. And he has a great look, especially because he comes out of Vegas in the 50s and 60s and 70s. The suits were great and the ties. And, uh, but we never really got to him after about four or five hours, he was waiting. <laughs> so when he finally would come on the set, the first thing, he'd come on the set looking around for me, and he'd, he'd find me, he'd say, I have a life. <laughs> I have a life, I don't need this. <laughs> and then he'd start with the crew, he'd go to each crew member, you don't have to take this, leave this guy. I mean, mutiny. On, mutiny In insurrection. On for hours and hours, and after a while, if you were in his eye line too, you get it, so it was very, you know. Now does he have a big part, you say he's a casino manager? He's a casino manager, yeah, he's there all the time. It's not just a walk on, he's not an extra, oh, no, he around, actually has around. There's, there's some dialogue too, and it's you know it's a, it's a big picture. When will this be released? This film. This is a, in the early fall, October, November. This is going to be another great movie for you guys. It's I, a wonderful combination. <laughs> you and De Niro can do. You can do my life story, and it would be a hit. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, historically now, yes. your, your first actual theatrical release, fully yes. commissioned motion picture. Uh, mean Streets. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, mean Streets, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Big budget? Uh, Not a big budget. No, about $600,000. $600,000 in yeah. those days was small money. Very, very small. And yeah. now it's like a nickel. 600 no. grand yeah. is a nickel, sure. That, at, that, at that time, we only had 25 days to shoot, 26 days or so. And the first night of shooting, it was a solo budget, the first night of shooting, we were shooting in New York, Harvey Keitel's supposed to get in a cab, or he's in a cab and he's, he's traveling around 6th, 6th Avenue and 8th Street in the village. And uh, we get there, a small crew, and I look at everybody, I said, okay, I said, all right, hail a cab. <laughs> That's it. That was my brilliant, you know, <laughs> you crazy. Hail a cab, they hail a guy, give him $25 for a few hours, right? I start to take the shot, the car's coming around the corner, I'm, around the, I'm crossed by the old Howard Johnson's there or whatever, and uh, the car's smoking. <laughs> it's a New York yeah, cab, typical of New York cab. Yeah. After a while, he got annoyed for the twenty-five dollars. The poor guy was there for five hours. We kept, we pushed the car, we pushed it, we did everything. Nothing is easy. Nothing. It's smoking because he's roasting a goat in the back seat. I think that's so, right. Yes. Yeah, that's a, oh yes. Yeah, oh that's yes. A, True. Goat. True. It's hysterical. Uh, and you yourself have appeared in a handful of films. Now, uh, the, the question, obviously. Which do you prefer? I know which you prefer, but how do you feel as an actor working through the direction of somebody else? Well, it's all right. I mean, the idea is I can only do it if, like, basically I'm sitting down, I wear a good suit, <laughs> and I got some good dialogue, and then they give me the suit. Uh -huh. Oh, you get to keep it. Search and Destroy got the suit. It was yeah, great. Yeah. And I'm in the first scene, Griffin Dunn, Rosanna Arquette, old friends. You know, it was great. Uh, quiz show. They didn't give me the suits, but they were great looking suits. Well, now, what was it like to be di directed? Now, the, here, the r roles are completely oh, reversed. Uh, yeah. You have Mr. Big Shot movie star, Mr. Good Looking Million Dollar yeah, Face, Redford. Robert Redford, is yeah. now directing you, yes. the consummate film director. Uh, yeah, we, we had tried to work together for a while. We said, look, the only way we're going to get to work together is if I direct you. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what eventually happened. But he was very, very patient, and uh, we shot everything in about two days. But you yeah. have to do everything seated. Yes. Now, why is that? Well, because I did one picture where I walked across a room. Uh -huh. That was uh, around midnight, a yeah. Trantavanier film. It was in Paris. And he said, and this scene is very easy. All you have to do is you're in a bar. I own the bar, and there's a, a jazz uh, Dexter Gordon playing there. And he said, you, you're at the bar, and you just cross right over to the band. Watch the band. I said, great, easy. It's no problem. And I start on action. I start, and it's a widescreen picture. And I start to walk, and I realize 
I'm walking. I said, how does one walk? One puts <laughs> your foot in front of the other, and you push the earth back. <laughs> you push and the yeah, earth back. You, you propel yourself forward. And then I said, my God, they're going to see me. I'm short. I'm balding in the back. It's, just, it's impossible. And finally, I made it to the other side of the room, and I said, never again in front of, in no, front of a camera. Easy. It's no, not easy. It's not easy. It's what actors have to do. Yeah. You know? And, and this, this building, this little yeah. complex, the Ed Sullivan Theater building, yeah. I understand has special significance oh, to yeah. you in your career. Yeah, it does. This, um, this building, the lobby of it, is where I, uh, a location scouts found it for a taxi driver, for one scene in Taxi Driver, in which uh, when I saw the lobby, I realized how to shoot the picture. It was one shot I made up, uh, which uh, kind of represented to me all his I think disorientation. We have that. Oh, yeah. and, and this is yeah. very special to us because yeah. everybody who works here, we walk right through this <laughs> lobby each and every day. R roll the uh, film here and let's see what uh, he's talking about. Did you get my flowers in the... Yeah, that's it. You didn't get them. But I sent uh, some flowers. Uh... Uh, well. yeah. yeah. Now, is the camera still out there or not? All right, let's, let's see what that shot looks like live right now. There it is. There, now, we fixed it up oh, just yeah. a bit. Yeah. We have no phone, but we have the phone books. Yeah. There's that same move there. Oh, hey, somebody leaving early. Oh, what look. the hell is going on here? Oh, look at that. Oh, my we put, God. Man, they're running like flies, like rats <laughs> off a ship. Uh, uh, oh, look. Same deal. Yeah. yeah. Now, this... I, I, I'm sorry, Martin, we're, we're very late on time, but yeah. I, I just want to mention this. This is the Million Dollar Movie. It's the yeah. second half of a biography about Michael Powell, uh, and you wrote the introduction for this. Yes. These guys oh, have amazing. changed my life. Yeah. If you get a chance to go see a Powell Pressburger film, yeah. or if you can rent them or buy them, whatever, and look at them, they're wonderful. Yes, they, they're they, every wrong. film that they make, even the ones that are not so great, they're so interesting amazing. and so compelling. Yeah. Yeah. And the, latest, you, the latest one is A Matter of Life and Death. We just got it restored. The British Film Institute's restored it. It's playing down at uh, Film Forum, I think. And, and Michael Powell uh, had a huge influence on your life yes. and career, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I met him uh, back in 1974. It's fascinating stuff. It's the Million Dollar Movie, the Michael Powell, the second half of his biography, and uh, as I mentioned, the introduction by Mr. Scorsese. It's a great pleasure to have Thank you here. You. Thank you for Thank everything, you. sir. Thank you. Martin, uh, once again, thank you very much for your time in Casino out in the fall, you say, October? Yes. Okay, good enough. Nice to have you with us. My thanks also to everybody who was here. Thanks for watching, folks. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.